the CD is so uh, exciting. Yes, it uh, is. I mean, yeah. to celebrate our friendship and our work together over these past 19 years yeah. together. Uh, the first work that you invited me to perform uh, was the Daniel McCarthy Chamber Symphony. That's right. Uh, and we performed that here for CBDNA. Yeah, and it's such a great piece. And uh, this collaboration, as you've mentioned, we've had over these years has led to some tremendous musical moments in, in the Wind Symphony history here at North Texas and for me personally. But that piece was particularly challenging, I thought, because of the chamber uh, side of it, so, so individually uh, written for each instrument. And um, I think we had a great group of players when we did that, as I've gone back and listened to oh, the tapes, man. because they, they really sensed what you were doing and blended uh, with that, uh, both artistically and um, uh, musically, you know, and it, it came out really well. It was like 14 soloists on yeah, stage, because exactly. it's for chamber winds and one percussionist and the marimba. Right. And uh, I'll never forget our first recording because this place, as North Texas goes, so many things are happening all at once. Our first rehearsal had to be in the lobby. I was going to say, this, I remember that. <laughs> of this building, which is not maybe the best rehearsal space because it's so boomy. And, uh, but it went, went really, really well. And I'll never forget walking on stage here because that was my first time to play in this hall mm -hmm. with, with the Wind Symphony for certain. And uh, the, the concert was so... Uh, packed so many people they opened up the coral terrace right and I when I stepped out I didn't expect to see so many people sitting behind me as well as in front and uh, I just remember that night being really special yeah so glad that that piece is is on our disc um, the um, it's exceptionally uh, difficult work for marimba uh, the way it's written and uh, you gave me a beautiful opportunity to write a con um, cadenza for the third movement so I really enjoyed doing that yeah, I think it came out really well. I, I'm a particularly uh, intrigued still by um, the titles of each movement, the programmatic mm -hmm, titles, mm -hmm. and um, still thinking about how does this title uh, <laughs> really influence what we're doing. Yeah. And I, that's like a teaser in a way. I'm, I'm not even going to give the titles. You have to take a look at the CD to see what it is. But it was really uh, very interesting the way he approached it and the way he uh, organized each movement. And I think it, it, uh, it's really a special yeah, piece. It's a beautiful piece. The, um, the overview of the CD, he opens with my uh, concerto, this Stubernick fantasy work that with Paul and Sandy Rennick performing marimba. Uh, and then we go to the Chamber Symphony with the Daniel McCarthy we just talked about. And then uh, Keiko Abe joins us for, to do her Prism Rhapsody. We premiered the wind ensemble version of right. this work and we actually put it on two DVDs together and uh, one CD, and we brought that back and remastered that for this disc. Um, you have mem any memories of working with Keiko on that? On that uh, yeah, absolutely, um, with both of you, but I remember, I remember uh, your comment early on after she went, while she was on campus, uh, and uh, you said to me, boy, she's just got so much energy. She's kicking my ass. That was your comment. <laughs> and uh, this little lady comes in and she's explosive, and, um, one of the things I'll never forget as a conductor, I asked her a question about a moment in the music. Um, and instead of speaking to me, she looked at me and went and played her answer. Mm -hmm. I was asking, how are you gonna, and she just said, this is how. She did it for me twice, I went, oh, okay, I get it. And we didn't have to say anything. And uh, she was so f uh, capable physically of leading the situation and helping me as a conductor understand exactly where mm -hmm. she was, and not only that, what she was going to do next. Both of you were. And, and it was interesting, because you were reading that from your side, I was reading it from my side, but she was really the one guiding us, and uh, a terrific, uh, terrific music making, and the energy that that piece has at the end, how long you, you have to play the, the 16th notes the at the very end, the intensity, and it yeah. builds, and it builds, and it builds, and you have to stay above the ensemble, and you both did. It always just brings the audience right up out of their chair. No it's kidding. such a great recording. And the wind symphony sounds so amazing on this track. I mean, it sounds amazing on all the tracks, but <clears throat> the horns especially, I remember. Yeah, big in, horn in parts. This, in wow, way. huge horn parts. And, um, and you, uh, all of these pieces, really, Eugene, you would take these pieces and modify them to make them even better. Little tweaks here and there, and Keiko was so appreciative 
of your help and guidance with that. And same thing with my, with my work as well as some, I know with the others, to just tweak the, uh, either the arrangements for the Wind Symphony or these original works yeah. to really bring out the best of these groups. So yeah, It's dangerous sometimes, but sometimes you discover things in a piece and you have to invent a solution uh, to, to cover a certain problem that the group might have, that wind groups might have doing this or that, doing a certain part of the piece. And um, I always take a chance and usually try to check with the composer once we've done it and say, what do you think? Is this something you could live of with? Course. And, um, uh, but, but it's true, it's, it's a living, breathing experience. And especially when you're fortunate to have the composer there, you can ask questions and interact and, and come up with solutions uh, mm -hmm. after you get done exploring the terrain, you know, and what's going to work for us, how do we make it even better. Well, I love to say, uh, and I do quite frequently in my group, great groups work on little things, um, not big things. Uh, but, and, and it's always something very small that makes such a big difference. And uh, we, we, we continually do that with everything we play. Wonderful. Wow. And then on my concerto, the Stubernick Fantasy, Paul and Sandy Rennick join us. I don't know if you know this, but uh, they've been married and they have three children. And this was the first time they'd ever performed together. Oh, isn't that yeah. something? And of course, they've worked together for years with drum corps work. They write and, and have these uh, award-winning drum lines with the different drum corps now with Santa Clara Vanguard. And that was just really a special moment for them because they had not had never performed together before. Yeah. yeah. the. Um, uh, and to bring that piece to life here, as I because I wrote that work for you, of course, and right. dedicated it to you. Thank you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we premiered after Stuba on this stage right, right. here, and which is a marimba trio. And uh, you came back to me afterwards, after that concert, and you said, wow, that was wonderful. Now write me a, a band piece like that. Yeah. And I was thinking, what are we going to do? Have the clarinet stand up and run around the chairs? And so I just kind of never just didn't think about it really for a while and then I had this opportunity to have a have a, a time release here a fellowship if you will off campus for a semester and a chance to study with Adam Gorb and Jack Stamp uh, and uh, I decided to take you up on your offer and that was in 2011 when I was starting this project mm -hmm. and um, so and then uh, we premiered it with the Lone Star Wind Symphony at Midwest that's five right. years ago yeah, in 2012 and that'll be a, a night I'm never going to forget. That was a really amazing night. Yeah, really super. Another work on this piece is the uh, Higdon, Jennifer Higdon's Concerto for Percussion. Massive work mm -hmm. um, that you invited me. You heard this performed at a CBDNA? I uh, believe so, yes. Yeah. And I believe it was it was it um, a military group band that was playing. Uh, it was, yeah, it was. And I, I I'm going to want to say it was uh, the Air Force, but I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. you know? But I believe they did the original arrangement, right. and we did it second. Right. And um, that was such a 20, about 25, 26 minute work that years. utilizes not just marimba, but vibraphone and crotales and a big uh, percussion setup with drums and cymbals and things. And uh, really a massive undertaking, but so just amazing piece of music, really uh, incredible, incredible yeah. work. Yeah, she's, uh, she's on fire right now as, as a, uh, composer in America and uh, often um, heralded, you know, as one of the great American composers. She's kind of a, come to that point in her career, and uh, just wonderful writing and a good sense of um, story and timing, you know, and uh, line, mm -hmm. all those things. She's just really terrific and original scoring too. That's that makes a group sound uh, different than you've ever heard it before. So. Um, lots of uh, original work and um, thinking goes into her music, I think. Absolutely. Um, great colors, amazing colors. Mm -hmm. And um, finally, to wrap up this disc, on the online uh, download, we have a, a, an additional track, uh, a, a favorite of mine. Yogoto is the composer, Japanese composer, did his DMA here at North Texas. His wife also did her DMA, Akiko, here. Um, in and, percussion. In percussion. Yeah. Yeah, DMA yeah. in percussion and Yogoto did it in um, uh, composition. Mu music ed and music, composition. That's right. Music ed. Anyway, he wrote this work called Ruffles from Afar and he wrote it for one of our alums, uh, John Lane, and uh, who did his masters with uh, us here and uh, teaches now at Sam Houston. And they premiered it and then we, we uh, performed it here and also at Music for All, the Bands of America Festival mm -hmm. in Indianapolis. So I, basically, I, I march in with a uh, rope drum 
and from outside in the way that Yo has. Crew, well, tell them how this piece starts. This is really well. Uh, it's an off-stage snare drum, which I don't know if there's any too many pieces to start with off-stage snare drum, but in the back of the hall, and the percussionist. Uh, starts playing but then moves through the audience, which audiences always love when the sound passes by them and they, they're looking over their shoulder, and works their way to the stage where then there's almost a contemporary, it's almost like the, the drum is coming from the past to the present, mm. and then there's a lot of work on uh, more traditional drum. Contemporary snare Contemporary drums. snare yeah. drum. And then uh, as the piece, uh, and lots of interesting sounds, uh, it, uh, way more than you think would be possible on, on a single drum. Mm -hmm. And then the piece ends with the, with the player once again donning the rope drum and marching away. So right. um, this calls from afar is, uh, is really uh, important part of the title because he uses a spatial concept, bringing the drum in and then taking it back out. And he changes styles because he starts right. with this mix of Americana with Yankee Doodle and other, other Americana uh, songs, I believe. And then he turns into to some these jazz work that kind of happens. And I'm playing brushes on snare drum and other types of riffs and um, really effective work. And not and it's it's really engaging for the audience. And only what eight minutes, nine yeah. minutes long. It's not very not a very long uh, work. Right. Yeah. And I found Yo to be interested in general in bringing things from the past into the present, into his work. Hmm. And um, sometimes he goes all the way back to the Renaissance to borrow things, but in this case he's going back to traditional drumming. Um, and Revolutionary War probably would be the thing that you'd think of first and foremost, uh, based on the tunes he picked. Sure. But uh, yeah, he's very creative, and um, it's, it's too bad we couldn't get it on the disc. We ran out of room. Uh, we yeah, asked. Yeah, yeah there we did, <laughs> 80 minutes, that's it. But uh, rather than um, lose it, we decided it'd be nice to have it be a, a bonus track for those who download the disc, because uh, mm -hmm. there's no problem adding it to the download. So. Oh. Uh, so it's there, and um, and most people nowadays they're going to buy their music online too. So that's an easy option. But we are we will have a, a physical CD, and we should talk about that for a moment because how many CDs have you conducted on now, Eugene? Uh, I'm going to give you a number that I know only because uh, <laughs> only because uh, I I wrote a book last year, and as one of the uh, things in the back, we listed all the CDs, but I'm at about 165. 165. Yeah. And is this one, this contact CD, is this the first one where you've had a picture on a CD? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I know, you, uh, you, Mark had to really <laughs> twist my arm to get me to put my picture on the CD. I, I've always been one, I've always told my grad students, if you ever see a CD with my picture on the cover, call me, I should be, I should be fired. <laughs> So, Mark, I think uh, after 165 CDs, you're you're due to have well, a picture on a CD. Mark, convince me. You convince me to to do this, and uh, I still don't like it, but it's there. And <laughs> it's I think it looks awesome. <laughs> Eugene's conducting, and I'm kind of in the middle of yeah. playing the marimba. And uh, we found an amazing artist to help put us these right. pictures together, and um, Kasha Zimba, and uh, my wife Evelina helped to direct the artwork, and really really exceptional and I was so happy well, that, that it came out so nice. He had to go all the way to Poland to find someone who would <laughs> be willing to deal with my photo. But uh, he did finally, by crossing the continents, Cons found yeah. someone who it's would It's an international it. disc. This is <laughs> so in closing here, just tell us just a little bit about what is it, how is it different to deal with a percussion soloist yeah. versus other soloists? Percussion in general, I love uh, the situation with percussion because you can see the sound about to happen and there is one and only one spot where it does happen. So it forces you to really be in time with the soloist. And uh, there's, the response is immediate on the instruments, except to say if you're bowing a cymbal, but mm. I mean, the, the response is so immediate that, that the players have to get really close to the pulse to find that moment in time. It's also, if you think about it for a wind band, uh, the problem wind bands have with concert audiences is nothing's moving on stage but the conductor and the percussion. An orchestra, the string section's in motion all mm -hmm. the time. You can see the motion throughout the orchestra. So I always say to my percussionists, everybody's watching you because you're really the one, one uh, uh, way that an audience member has a way of getting inside the sound and seeing how sound is made. Um, and 
uh, that's, a, that's actually an asset when you're, when you're accompanying a percussion soloist because you can really focus on where things are. And I also notice uh, that, um, say, when you and Keiko were playing together, um, the physical relationship of how you prepare to make the sound also is what we would just call the breath. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it serves the same function. So lining up the way people breathe with the way um, percussionists prepare the stroke Rarely does a percussionist just drop their hands on the instrument. There's usually something that... Hopefully not. Yeah, that just <laughs> leads to the sound. There's always a preparation in the gesture, which is much like conducting, too. So, sure. Uh, so it, it, those, those things make it really exceptional. Um, and the, the other thing is balance is usually not as big a problem because percussionists are capable of playing pretty big sounds. Hmm. And uh, um, you're not as concerned, although there's also some of the softest playing I've ever heard on this disc, too. So you, you do have to be attentive to it. But um, it's, a, uh, it's a matter of time, I think, and sound, and being able to put the sound with the player. Awesome. It's great. Well, some of my fondest memories on stage uh, are here with you conducting and represented in this disc. I th I, this is about our fifth or sixth disc together. Yeah. Um, and uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support and your invitations to perform and, uh, and openness for looking for new sounds and music. And uh, I've had a blast playing this music and I look forward Great. to the next one, of course. But this CD is special because it's, um, it's the only one I know of, of pure percussion features or concertos through a whole disc with Wind Symphony. Yeah, I, and, think, um, it, I think so too, I, I don't know. It, too many that have taken that on. And um, it's interesting, when I went to Alec, our publisher, with this, he wasn't sure about this. He said, well, I'm, is there gonna be any interest in this disc? And I said, oh yeah. I said, the percussion world is alive with interest about <laughs> what people are New doing. Works, I said, yeah. you gotta go to a PASIC convention and you wouldn't ask yourself that question. Mm -hmm. You know, they, it's a must do for every percussionist every year. And that's, that's where the nucleus is of the interest. But I think for all of my colleagues in uh, conducting with their ensembles, they're more likely to have a, a great percussion department than anything else these days at their universities and high schools. Mm. Uh, it's become such a specialty and so important and so many students involved in it, student musicians, that people are taking care of that. And we see from all over the country and really all over the world based on your travels and your festivals that you do, um, this huge interest in percussion playing. And it's so varied. Um, world percussion uh, is unbelievably active yeah. and, um, in all sorts of ways. So it was a chance for us to um, really experience great artistry. That's one of the things I want the Wind Symphony to be able to do regularly is, is what, 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 is, what is it like to hear Mark Ford and Keiko Abe play and to be sitting right next to them? And when you watch a video, you know, you see it in the eyes of our players. They're just so thrilled to be there at that moment in time. And uh, um, of course, we had that big project with Evelyn Glennie once, too. And that was another big mm -hmm. event for all of us. But when these great artists come, and uh, especially in a recording session, when, for instance, you can't get Keiko Abe to stop practicing, <laughs> even to eat. You know, you have to say, Keiko, take just a minute and have a half a sandwich, please. We're worried about you. We want you to have some, some no problem. I don't need to eat. I've got percussion, <laughs> you know. But when you see that kind of art, you're around that kind of artistry as a student, it really helps build your passion for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's what's so beneficial about playing with guest artists, I think. Absolutely, your, it helps to fine tune the path of, right. of where they want to go in their career, right. for certain. Right. Yeah. Well, it's been a great pleasure, Eugene, as always. Yeah. Me too. I can't wait till next week to have this CD released. Yes. So it's on the GIA label, and it's going to be uh, released and distributed by Naxos. The title of the CD is Contact, and check it out. <laughs>